Rivalries in business and technology have been around since cavemen were trying to craft a better spear. There have been cola wars, burger wars, shampoo wars. Okay, that last one is just me in the shower each morning trying to decide which one's gonna give me more bounce. One war between a foreign and a U.S. automaker spilled out into the racing world. The battle between guys named Enzo and Henry became 24 hours of car wars. In the early 1960s, car pioneer Henry Ford's grandson, Henry Ford II, showed he was a chip off the old block. As CEO of the Ford Motor Company, he too was determined to succeed where no American car maker had before. They wanted to get into really prestige sports car racing and thought instead of starting their own program, what if they bought an existing company? And they actually talked seriously with Enzo Ferrari about buying his Italian car making company. But at the last moment in 1963, Enzo Ferrari decided that he just could not work under the conditions of having to answer to somebody in Dearborn. Because of that, Henry Ford II took it as kind of a personal slight and decided, well, you know, if we can't buy Ferrari, we're going to beat him on the racetrack. Matt Anderson, curator of transportation at the Museum of American Innovation in Detroit, Michigan, gave me the lowdown on the machine that humbled Ferrari and the race that pushes cars and drivers to their limits. What would you say is the most challenging auto race in the world? I think for pure difficulty, pure grueling conditions, it's got to be the 24-hour of Le Mans in France. Ferrari had dominated at Le Mans into the early 1960s. They'd won the race nine times, several of those times back to back, you know, year after year. The first two years, Ford raced at Le Mans. None of their cars managed to even finish the race, much less win. All that changed in 1966, when Ford became the first American car company ever to win Le Mans finishing first, second, and third. But the thrill of victory came with an asterisk because the winning three cars were actually designed and built by a company in Great Britain. What's significant about this car? This car is to date the only all-American car to win at Le Mans. That means it was built in the United States, sponsored by an American team, piloted by two American drivers. And when did it win? 1967, one with a couple of drivers named Dan Gurney from California and A.J. Foyt of Texas. They're both very famous. Absolutely. The U.S. designed 67 car came with a powerful 427 big block V8 engine and was called the Ford Mark IV. There are a number of uh, innovations and innovative ideas in this car. First of all, the shape of the vehicle. It was refined in a Ford Motor Company wind tunnel to be as aerodynamic as possible. It's got a windshield wiper up front, which is actually adapted from a Boeing jetliner, if you can imagine that, Whoa. all the, the wind you'd have on this car. Top speed on this vehicle, uh, easily 210, 215 miles an hour. From above, you can see the Fords accelerating up to 220 miles per hour down the 3.6 miles straight away. How much did this win by over the Ferrari? The car actually was about uh, 32 miles ahead of the nearest Ferrari, if you could imagine that. What's really amazing is that this Ford Mark IV traveled over 3,200 miles in 24 hours and set a new course average speed record of 135 miles per hour. Starting in 1966, Ford won Le Mans four times in a row. And Ferrari? They haven't won Le Mans since.